Hello my Sock Universe! To the review of what happened on the final match days in Western Europe. Bottom line, I'm wearing Atletico, Atletico Madrid and will get the title over the line and big celebrations and it actually caps off um, a very unusual season in both leagues where uh, the big boys were always a little bit faltering and it was for Lille who had done great work already previously, especially the talent that they are pulling out and selling on uh, is staggering. Uh, and also Atletico Madrid, who I have to say, that title has been coming for, for, for a while. Uh, they have been finishing ahead of Real Madrid uh, quite a few times in the last four years. Um, I always thought that they were the closest challenger to Barcelona in the last two titles for Barca. Um, and I said it uh, last season that I thought this is the time uh, with um, Ronaldo leaving Madrid and so on. This is the time for uh, Atleti to shine. It's finally because everything seems to be kind of breaking up. They couldn't do it last season, which I thought was disappointing. This season, however, they got it done. And in the end, yes, there was a period where it seemed like, oh, very, very shaky. And it typically Atletico Madrid uh, fashion, I say, we're not comfortable with such a big lead. We just want to keep it small and tight and whatever. And then they clawed themselves in and they, I think, won four of the last five games. And the one that they did not win was the game at Barcelona where they were largely the better team. So uh, congratulations, uh, Atletico Madrid. Lille, I think, is equally, if not more impressive because getting over the might of PSG, uh, who I have to say had a rough season because it was all about the Champions League. They thought they could win a uh, league. Um, just, you know, with uh, being in second or th at most third gear. Uh, and they woke up a little bit too late. And the bigger one was that right after the last international break, they had to play Lille, which they beat in the cup with a B squad for Lille uh, handy handily. And then Lille came to Paris. Yes, this was exactly the weekend. I think after the international break, this is the best time to beat a big team. That's exactly what happened. And then Lille, uh, yes, they were nervous last weekend. This, they got it done. And I have to say, although I have very big PSG leanings, um, I was very happy for Lille to win this one. I actually pumped my fist when they scored uh, the first goals, just because it refreshes the entire league. And it is a testament that League 1 is not this farmer's league where there's only PSG winning. No, actually not. There are uh, at least three more good teams in there and I really hope that um, they can keep up the level although with Lille you don't know where the future uh, will be going and the team at least the coach is already leaving so it is um, rather troublesome there and we also had a surprise in the Portuguese Cup that is the last thing I want to say Let's jump into uh, the games. I do have a little surprise once uh, in a little bit later, but just as a little teaser coming up there. La Liga, the last round. I mean, the only games that I really saw were the two that were relevant for the title, but I followed the, the, the results of, of the others. Um, Betis coming back from a two-goal deficit at Celta Vigo to claim sixth spot in the end uh, with Iago Aspas uh, and Mendez uh, gave Celta the, league, so, uh, the lead in the 49th, but Borja Iglesias comes back. Then Fekir in 69th and uh, uh, Ruiz... Uh, sending uh, Betis on the, on, on, on the way. Uh, yeah, was kind of what I see, there were a few red cards given uh, on the pitch and off the pitch. So rather interesting final match day. Um, but this was also helped that Villarreal could not uh, hang on to the win against Real Madrid, which we'll talk uh, in a little bit. Elche against Athletic Bilbao was a huge win for Elche, where uh, that was a team that we all thought is going to get relegated. They get a win, and, and Athletic Club is, is a team that is a little bit of an enigma to me this season, because they can give any big team huge trouble, but then you lose on the last match day against Elche, who, yes, they needed that win, 
they got that win. Uh, Boye and Guti scoring the two goals and huge celebration of Coro and Elche. Because once they lost to Atletico Madrid a few week, weeks ago, I think everyone thought that Elche is sure, sure, surely going to go down. They claw themselves back. Also a little bit helped by results that Uesca, who just needed a single goal against Valencia, cannot find the winner. Um, and so Elche leapfrogs uh, Uesca in the table. But as I said already, it was all about the league title race. And what a fitting finish to the season. Because at halftime, both contenders were down. And I, and, and I thought to myself, it was an exciting La Liga season, but the quality in La Liga at the moment is not as high as it used to be even five years ago. So uh, you could see it was a very competitive league, but it was not necessarily a great league. But um, it got us quite some e e e e excitement. Uh, it was a league where Atletico Madrid could not keep up the breakneck pace. There were some, you know, uh, things, I'm such as I think, Tri Trippier, injuries, COVID cases with Real Madrid, Barcelona uh, completely seeming to be the best team in Spain, winning the cup and then completely falling apart. So there were many really good storylines, none bigger than actually Luis Suarez. And it all came down to the point where, you know, at one point I thought this is a league that no one wants to win. And that's exactly what happened here. Uh, but the funny thing is that Atletico Madrid was not nervous about it because almost at the same time Valladolid and Villarreal score goals against the uh, Madrid, Ma, their Madrid teams. Um, Atletico Madrid controlling the early exchanges, however, they are really caught on. I think it was an own corner. They are really caught, caught, caught on. A, a really good counter contact with Oscar Plano, uh, a Real Madrid um, youth product. Finishes up a, a, a nice counter attack to give it to give a, a rival to lead to actually needed a win as well to have a shot at being saved a one nil lead, and over in Valdebebas Pino after Gerard Moreno assist puts Villarreal in the lead, which Villarreal also needed actually that win in order to stay in the Europa League spots. However, it all then changes in the second half, at least for Atletico Madrid. Real Madrid playing over rather timid, uh, you know, not with much urgency in many ways. However, as I said, in the second half, it changes, uh, especially when uh, Isco and Rodrigo come on. Uh, a goal for Benzema was then given uh, for, or, uh, wasn't given for offside, uh, correctly so, although it was a tight one. But then uh, over in Valladolid, Angel Correa gives Atletico Madrid an, an equalizer and what a wonderful goal I mean the ball comes from Carrasco he kind of miscontrols this with his first touch but then with two more touches getting through the defense and then toe poking it in absolute brilliant goal absolutely brilliant goal to set Atletico Madrid 1-1 at that moment it really seemed inevitable for, for me that Atletico Madrid is gonna win the title because Real Madrid I thought they might get an equalizer but I didn't I couldn't really believe that they will uh, they will win that one and then uh, Luis Suarez being very opportunistic because of a back pass from Vidal is played right into his path he can run through and goal and it is so fitting that Luis Suarez scores what turned out to be the winning goal for that title uh, however, late on, there was a pretty big chance for Valladolid that could have equalized the game, which would have been disastrous for Atletico Madrid because Real Madrid actually do turn the game around very late. Benzema gets an equalizer in 87, and Luka Modric with a really good shot in the 92nd makes it 2 1. However, it's too little, too late. Atletico Madrid hang on, and Real Madrid end the season without a title. However, over in Valladolid, huge scenes of celebration. Uh, Luis Suarez on the phone crying. I thought, uh, I mean, I didn't understand. I don't speak Spanish, so I didn't say, but uh, you could see the emotion uh, inside of Diego Simeone. It was actually, it was great celebration. I was waiting that the. Uh, get the trophy out but I didn't see any trophy press presentation and yeah, I couldn't even find a picture and then what really uh, and please if you know more drop a line below uh, the trophy looked differently and I have to say the Spanish league literally is one of the more ugly ones out there so I hope they replace it with a nicer one and so yes with all this we have the final table with uh, Atletico Madrid winning it
over Real Madrid by two points. Uh, with the top four were set already. Real Betis with the turnaround at um, Vigo. Uh, go ahead of Villarreal who basically lose out on the Europa League spot. Uh, very little on and they will be now in the Conference League unless, unless they win the Europa League. And on the bottom of the table of course we have that um, Elche is now ahead uh, of Huesca as I said already with uh, unfortunately via the lead owned by Ronaldo. There's now the zone um, uh, documentary about them. I really hope he stays on and that they will make it back as well. Yay! Just in time for having the big uh, review of the Liga. I got my little jersey. It has been a long time waiting. The unpacking video will be the next video that I will post, but yeah. Here it is, there I tell you the story. But here is, I finally have Lil and they are champions. So I'm proudly wearing this jersey. As I said before, I was actually quite happy that Lil did win this title. Uh, and it actually was not a nail biter. Maybe for a second at the very end, but it was not a nail, nail biter because uh, with a nice Renato Sanchez pass, Jonathan David in the 10th minute put Lil into the lead and so they never got to this where we question our abilities blah 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 at that point it, uh, it looked safe and then Burak Gilmas just before the half makes it 2-0 everyone knew the title will be Lille's uh, and so it didn't matter that uh, PSG also had the lead at the same time uh, although uh, Neymar who I really think Neymar is one of the best penalty takers but whatever befell him that he missed that penalty it has its, two its typical ru uh, runner, we just missed it by a hair. Uh, that was a nine, the ninth, but then a favor on goal. Uh, but actually pressed in a little bit of trouble because they were then teetering on these relegation playoffs. So yeah, at halftime, I think the title race was gone. And I was actually a little bit mad because this was happening at the same time as the um, Champions League uh, deciding uh, games in Italy and I watched uh, it on kind of a goal uh, zone thing and they were staying then too much in France and too little where there was really something to play for. Um, Mbappé makes it 2-0 for PSG um, so uh, PSG ran out winners there and Lille still Celebration, celebration, celebration. However, very, 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 very late, with almost the last kick of the game, uh, Fugini made it 1-2 um, uh, from Angers' point of view. And then off the kick of you see everyone storming forward. However, the referee decided, no, we don't need much stoppage time. And it ends in huge scenes of celebration, not only in Angers, where the um, Lille players were celebrating, but also in Lille itself, of course. I mean. This is a major, major upset, major title, as I alluded to earlier already. For PSG, rather disappointing, but at least, uh, we have not talked about that, they won the Coupe de France against Monaco earlier in the week. So uh, that's at least something where PSG can uh, say they have somewhat saved the season, although for PSG it's probably uh, a disappointment overall. Then uh, we had also the fight for this last Champions League playoff spot, which was all in Lyon's hand in many ways. Monaco try, uh, had a tough game at last and were held to a nil-nil draw. But whatever Lyon did, and I have to say, those Lyon jerseys, the new ones, they are perfect. They are really gorgeous. And Lyon took the lead. Uh, through a camp in the 4-14th, Dolberg, uh, and there was a lot of VAR going on. I think they had another goal uh, disallowed by VAR. Uh, Kasper Dolberg um, gets an equalizer for this, also a lengthy VAR re review. Then a Kambi puts again uh, Lyon in the lead, and then Awa would have made it 3-1. Again, goal disallowed for offside. So uh, a lot of stuff happening uh, there. But then Camara in the 50th and Celiba in the 57th turned the game around. And Lyon, who sh if they win, they are in the Champions League qualification. They cannot manage to hang on. And so a uh, big loss. And I think Rudi Garcia is most likely on his way out there. And uh, for going going down, I mean, all the, it then bottled down if with Brest. Uh, losing and Lorient hanging on, 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 on to a draw, not 
needed to get at least a point to stay ahead of Brest, but alas, they cannot. Montpellier actually missed a penalty through the lower, but uh, Laborde uh, puts it uh, in. They get the equalizer through Colo in the 33rd, but then uh, the low in the 76 scores the winner for Montpellier. And as we will see now, uh, this sends Nantes straight into a playoff. We will see this uh, in a sec. Final table. It says as, as much. Lorient actually finishing 16th. This was a team that was really relegation threatened, but uh, hang on. With 40 points, not finishes in 18th. 40 points is always seen as this magic mark, however, that's for the 18 team league. And I really have to do, uh, I have done it, I really have to do the video on that. Start Ren with a win over Nîmes, actually, Leapfrog Lens to make it into the conference league. So Lens kind of a little bit. Uh, blowing it uh, tour to to the end, Marseille and Lyon, the two Olympics are in the Europa League, and as I said, uh, Lille PSG in the Champions League already, and Monaco um, in the playoff there. And Nantes, as I said, has to play now a relegation playoff on Thursday and on Sunday against Toulouse, uh, two-legged tie. We have to see uh, where uh, this will go. And I want to finish up in Portugal, where OU the midweek round. Uh, here the results, Porto winning 4-0. Um, we had Sporting 5-1 and Benfica over Guimarães 3-1. That last one, uh, Guimarães losing and Santa Clara winning against Faenge, uh, actually means that in the, in the table, uh, Santa Clara uh, finishes ahead of uh, Guimarães. And as far as I know, this means that they actually get a European spot of, uh, because Braga uh, goes into the Europa League. And uh, why does Braga go into the Europa League? We'll talk about that uh, very, very soon. Um, we also have that uh, Rio Ave, who were in the Europa League uh, last season, can stay down there and have to now play a playoff against Aruca on Wednesday and also on Sunday. And Braga's plays in the Europa League because they have been beating Benfica in a very testy cup final. Uh, late there was sent off for Benfica or in the 16th. Then Piazon just before the half makes it 2-0. Um, and uh, Orta in the 80, 85th gets uh, the win for Braga. Then there were two players sent, sent off Tarabt and Piazon for fighting. So everything uh, rather testy, but in the end, Braga hangs on and it's a surprising season when neither Porto nor Benfica win a win a title. It's Sporting and Braga, kind of the third and fourth powers in Portugal that hawk the titles there. So yeah, that was it for the season. I am planning, the, since, since there's so many relegation playoff uh, games that I've been talking about, I think I will do an entire video uh, early next week to summarize these in one uh, big Round, round up four for this and then finish the seasons. I would love to do a season in a review, but I'm not sure if I will get there because we have now a Champions League and Europa League and then we're already getting into the Euros and their stuff planned. So I might, n I might not be able to do that, but let's see how time uh, goes. I don't have much time at the moment. That's the reality. In any case, drop some line below what you think uh, about the last match days in all of these three leagues. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for some more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.